Hello friends and welcome back to part 22 of this series where we'll be creating an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. So in this video, we'll be working on our following function where users will finally be able to follow other users on our Instagram clone. Alright, so let's first take a look at our database architecture workflow once more. And you can see here that I have a user follower relation table. Alright, so let's consider the relationship between followers and followees. So I think it'll be easier for me to draw it out here. Alright, so let me illustrate how this relationship works. So imagine I have a bunch of users over here. So I have four users over here. And now this user decides to follow this user. So this arrow represents this user following this user. This user also decides to follow user number two as well as user number three. So this user is following all three other users. But this user is also able to be followed by other users as well. So there's no cap. So this relationship represents that this user right here is following all other three users, but this user is also followed by the three users as well. So when you see that one user has multiple relationships to other users, but it also has multiple relationships coming into other users from other users, this represents a many to many relationship. So our many to many relationship over here is where one user is able to follow multiple users and is also able to be followed by multiple users. So this sort of relationship is one of the most complex relationships in database architecture. And if we take a look back to our database architecture, you can see that I have this user follower relation table over here, where it'll just contain a few fields such as the followed by column as well as the followed to column. So this table can be taught to store the data of these blue and red lines over here. So each of these blue and red lines will represent a single row in our user follower relation table to sort of store the many to many relationship inside our table itself. All right, so now that you have a clear understanding of the database architecture as well as the relationships, let's go to our Superbase table, Superbase dashboard, and let's go ahead and create our user follower relationship table. So let's just create a new table. I'll name it user follower relationship. We'll disable role level security. And we want to keep our ID as well as the creator that. And now we want to add a new column followed by, this will be a UUID column. And we also want to add a followed to which should also be our type UUID. And we can just get rid of the default values for now. Now, these two columns will also reference our user data table. So we can add a foreign key relation. And we'll choose our user data table. So for the relationship, it will be followed by to UU, uh, user ID. Sorry. For the actions, we'll just set it as cascade. And we also want to add another foreign key relation to the same user data table. But now we want to choose the follow to column, which will also reference our user ID column. And we can also likewise give it cascade for both. Then we save it, and then we just save this table. All right, so now we have our user follower relation intermediary table done. Okay, so now that we have this, we can go back to our Flutterflow app, and let's see. We also need to add the screen to actually allow our users to follow other users as well. So this screen is very similar to our profile screen, except that it has two other buttons, the follower as well as message button. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and take our profile screen, profile page, and we'll just duplicate this page for now. We'll name this other user page. And we also don't want to show it on the nav bar. So we'll get rid of that. And with this row selected, we no longer want this edit icon, so we'll get rid of this. But instead, inside the row, we want to add instead an icon. And this will be the back icon. So we'll first change the icon to back 
chevron over here. Let's just choose this one. And we also want to align the row to, for the main axis alignment of the row, we want to set it to start. Okay, and now we want to actually add the two buttons over here, follow as well as message. So that will be inside the column itself. So we have to go to our main column over here. Then we want to add a new row. And you want to bring this row right over here. And inside this row, we want to add two buttons. So for this first button over here, let's just style it. And then after that, we can duplicate this button. So with this button selected, let us change our button text to follow. For our font weight, let's change it to normal. For the font size, let's change it to 14. And I think we also like to add some letter spacing, let's say 2 or 1. I think 1 is enough. Let's also go ahead and decrease the height to 32. And let's also change our font family over here. So instead of primary family, we can go to theme fonts and we can choose our secondary family instead. Let's decrease our font size to 14. And let's change our font weight to normal. Alright. And I think I also want to increase the width of the button to, let's say, 64. Or maybe that's too little. 1, 2, 8. Maybe a bit more for the width. So for the button width, let's set it as 1, 5, 6. Yep, seems good. And let's just decrease the height a bit to 36. Let's also change the fill color to a less deep sh shade of blue. Yep, I think that works. So now that we have our follow button, we can just duplicate this. And we want to rename our buttons as well. Now for our message button, let's first change our button text. And we'll also change our fill color to secondary text. Now with the row selected, let us add some padding to the left as well as to the right. And now for our main axis alignment over here, let's just choose space between to send them to the two ends. And I don't quite like the amount of space over here. So actually what we can do for our buttons to make them to make them of a larger width, we can click on the follow button. And instead of specifying this width over here, we just remove that. We'll just set the expansion to expand it. And we do the same for this message button. And now for our row, if we go back to our row, we'll just add some item spacing. That seems very good. Alright, so now we want to allow our users to have a way to navigate to this other user page. So that is done through our post component when the user clicks on this circle image. So with the circle image selected, let us click on this action and we will open our action flow editor. And you want to navigate to our other user page. Now, our other user page should also contain some page parameters so that we know which user this is. So in the with the other user page root page selected, we will create a new page parameter. And this will be user ID. It will be of type string. And it's a required parameter. So going back into our post components, whenever we click on this circle image, we want to navigate to our other users page and pass our user ID. So the value will simply be our full post view row. And we can choose the posted by field over here to pass our user ID. Then now in our other users page, we currently do not have access to our user data row for our user. So we need to do a super base query to get that row data. So in our column over here, we can actually call that with a query. So we can add a query. We can query our do a super base query on our user data table. We want to return a single row. And for the filter, it will be where our user ID is equal to 
our page parameter user ID. Then now we can link up the data here as well. So for the username, it will just be our user data row username. Give it a now value, a default now value. For the posts, it will be our user data row number of posts, zero. For our followers, it will be our user data row number of followers, zero. And I think you actually can't see it. So what we can do is we can click on this and we can give it a UI builder display value. So this doesn't affect the actual code. It just affects how it is displayed inside our Flutterflow builder over here. So we just put that as now so that now we can see this and we can link it up as well. Alright, cool. Then now we will link our profile picture. Show error image on failure. Now we also link this username and bio as well. So this is very standard stuff that we did in previous videos as well. And hopefully you're also able to know how to do this by yourself. So this will be the bio and we'll keep the links there for now. All right, so now that we have linked up the data over here, the next thing we can do is we can actually add the action to insert a new row inside our user follower relationship for our follow button over here. So when the user clicks on this follow button, on the on tap action, we want to insert a new row into Superbase. And for our table, looks like I actually forgot to get schema once more. So we get schema so that now we have access to our user follower relationship table. So in our insert action over here, now we can choose our user follower relationship and we have to set some fields. We'll get rid of the ID as well as created that. But now for the follow byte, we want to. Now for the follow by field, this will simply be our authenticated user's user ID. And for our follow to field, this will be our page parameter user ID over here. Alright, but one problem that could possibly arise over here is that if the same user clicks on this follow button multiple times, then it would insert multiple of the same rows with the same followed by as well as followed two columns since there's currently no constraint on this. So how we can sort of mitigate this problem is we can go back to our Superbase database. I can actually go and edit this table and instead of our ID being our primary key, we can actually set a compound primary key which combines our followed by as well as followed two columns. So I'll get rid of that. And for followed by and followed to, if we both if we choose both columns as our primary key, then we can see that we have created a compound primary key, a composite primary key. So if we save this. Now these two join together is our primary key, our composite primary key. So since our followed by as well as followed to are now our primary key, they cannot be duplicated. So we can only have one combination of followed by as well as followed to. So if we try to manually insert some rows over here, this is successfully created. But now if we try to insert the same combination of followed by as well as followed to, you can see that it throws an error, a duplicate key value violation. But let's say we change the order. So now test two user is following our Excel Auto user. So that is still fine since it's a different combination. So that is great. Now that works. We can delete these two rows first. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to actually update the followers as well as following data over here in our UI as well as in our user data table. So you want to update both the number of followers as well as number of following. So how we can achieve this is through Superbase triggers, which we learned when we implemented our post-like relationship table. 
So it's very similar to our other post like relationship table. So how we did that last time is we went to ChatGPT. So let's use ChatGPT once more. So inside ChatGPT, we can just search for, we can just prompt ChatGPT to give us the code. All right, so this is the prompt that I came up with. You can also copy it in the YouTube description down below. So let's give it to ChatGPT and hopefully it gives us the correct trigger function. All right, so we have our function over here. Let's copy this and let's go to our SQL editor and create a new snippet. So we just paste that. We run this, success, no rows return, that's what we like to see. Then we have to copy this code to actually create the trigger itself. All right, nice. So that's great. Let's just quickly check this function so that we actually know what's going on. So let's just start with inside the body of the function. So this is to update our user data table and set the number of following to be equal to the number of following plus one where our user ID is equal to our newly inserted rows followed by ID. So yes, that seems correct because this is updating the current user's row to increase the number of users that he or she is following by one. Then for our user data table, now this is updating and setting the number of followers to be increasing by one where the user ID is equal to our newly inserted rows followed to ID. Yes, so this is now increasing the user who just got a new follower by one. So that's great. That works perfectly. So now we can go back to our Flutterflow dashboard. And whenever we actually click on follow, we should want to also update this data over here in the UI. So after inserting a backend row and this then triggers this trigger function, then we also have to refresh our database request so that our UI updates as well. So we choose our column and that should be it. All right, so yep, that should be good. Now we can try testing out this app. All right, so test has just loaded up. Let's try going to the Axolotl user. So you can see that everything links well, all the data is being linked correctly. Now, if we try to follow, you see that the number of followers now increased by one. We go back to our super base table to into our user follower relationship. You can see that a new row has been inserted and followed by is set to our current user, which is our test to user. So test to user and follow to is being set to our Axolotl user right here. And if we go back to our user data, we get rid of this filter. You can see that for our Axolotl user, which is the first row, our number of followers increased by one. And for our second row, which is our test two user, the number of following increased by one. So great. And looks like we actually did not add the functionality to our back button. So let's go ahead and quickly add that now. So in our other users page, let's just add an action to this icon on tap and just choose the navigate back action. However, our following functionality is not really complete just yet since there's currently no way to sort of unfollow a user. So in the next video, that will be what we are going to try to achieve. So I hope you're excited for that video and I'll see you in the next video.